What the hell has happened to Haas F1? Haas entered F1 in 2016 and turned heads by scoring points on its debut. But after finishing in the top 10 in 3 of the first 4 Grand Prix, it only matched the feat once in the next 17 races. The American team finished its debut season in 8th place in the Constructors' Championship and repeated the position in 2017, albeit with more points, before rising to a 5th in 2018. So, where did it all go wrong? Well, let's start with the 2018 championship. Gunther Steiner had said that Haas's aerodynamic development will be better and more consistent in 2018 as the team continues to increase the size of its Formula 1 operation. Haas has a close technical partnership with Ferrari, which includes an engine deal, and also works closely with Italian chassis designers Dallara. The team has been building its own aerodynamic department since joining the grid in 2016. Has continued the clear progress it had made since it arrived in Formula 1 two years ago. However, despite having built what was clearly the fourth quickest car in the field in 2018, they ended up fifth in the championship. Consequently, rival midfield teams eyed the VF18 warily. Many pointed remarks about the similarities between the Haas and Ferrari, but the fact of the matter is the team's cars comply fully with the regulations. Following a strong show and during winter testing, Haas again showed up in Australia with a competitive car, scoring the team's best ever starting grid positions with Magnussen starting 5th and Grosjean 6th. During the Grand Prix, they were running in 4th and 5th positions, which would have given them the best ever result and half of the 2017 points tally, but both cars retired one lap after their respective pit stops. By the end of Round 4, Haas was nowhere close to the points it had scored in its debut season and the 2017 season. During the race in Spain, Kevin managed to secure 6th place, whereas Grosjean, well he had decided that he was bored with F1 and thought about taking his car for a spin. After his shenanigans, Stoner responded in the only way he knew. He's not fucking doing that to me, you know. He does not fox smash my door, tell him that. Things didn't change in Monaco, and in Canada and in France. Magnussen managed to get another 6th place finish. As for Grosjean, he still freaking had the same amount of points as Russell did in 2019. The team finally got their break at Austria where they finished in 4th and 5th positions. It also meant that the team had also surpassed the 2017 points total after only 9 races. From there on, they went on a point scoring streak until Italy where Grosjean was stripped of 6th place when the team took their chances of running a floor which had already been rendered illegal by a new technical directive. Haas claimed they hadn't had enough time to update their floor, an explanation which pointed again to their limited development resources, as did their decision to skip the mid-season test at the Hungara rink. That just went on to show a massive problem that no other team, including Williams, had. But then the team bounced back again by scoring only 8 points in the next 3 races before retiring Grosjean's car at their home race in the USA. Magnussen lost a potential 8th at the team's home race by using too much fuel, a situation the team was clearly aware of during the race yet failed to adequately manage. Steiner responded to the FIA in the only way he knew. He's not fucking doing that to me, you know. He does not fox smash my door, tell him that. However, the team did brilliantly to not score any points in Mexico but score at Brazil and Abu Dhabi and therefore end their season on a high and also managed to score twice as many points as they did in 2017. While the team should have made more of its 2018 campaign, it ended the season in strong shape having improved its championship position, secured significant extra income and made an early start to its preparations for 2019. And then it happened. Two men by the name of Gene Haas and Gunther Steiner had a conversation about a title sponsor and it went something like this. Holy moly. Gunter, there is no way to address the owner of Haas F1. Yeah, whatever. Listen, you know how we're looking for a title sponsor, right? Right. And you know how we want a very reliable sponsor that will totally not troll us in the future, right? Right. Wrong. Wrong. Alright, get to the point. Now listen to me. There is this drinks company that has told me they want to be a title sponsor. What's their name? Something called Rich Energy. Never heard of them. Yeah, me neither. But here's the thing. They told me that they want to be a title sponsor 
and that if we crash out of a race, then they won't troll us on social media. You know what? That's a good deal. Tell them we accept their offer. That's not how actually the conversation went, but we can guess that a conversation between Reach Energy, Hasefon, and Steiner could go this way. The American team linked up with a little known brand ahead of the 2019 season and adopted Rich Energy's black and gold colors for his 2019 car. Rich Energy's outspoken former boss, William Story, boasted at the launch of the car that his ambition was to beat industry leader Red Bull on and off the track. But this was not the only thing that caused them to suck in 2019, since this marked the start of their downfall along with something else. For 2019, changes have been made to the aerodynamic regulations in an attempt to create closer racing and more overtaking. The American outfit enjoyed a strong 2018 season and went on to finish in 5th place in the Constructors' Championship with 93 points. But despite a 6th place finish in the 2019 season opener in Melbourne, has endured a miserable year as it struggled to make its tires work in most conditions. Its car had several times provoked to be the best of the rest in terms of qualifying pace but it had invariably sank quickly down towards the back of the field in the race, unable to generate and maintain the current tire temperatures. Grosjean even stuck with the Melbourne spec car at Silverstone and reported that although the low sensors confirmed that the newer spec car was generating more downforce, his older spec version felt better with more consistent rear end stability. Getting the tire to work properly requires both its tread and its core, which is the bulk of the tire inside, to reach the current temperature. The bendiness of the rubber is a key part to the mechanism of a tire's grip. A tire is effectively an energy store, and as its tread is squeezed between the tiny gaps in the track surface's asphalt, so that stored energy is then released as grip, with the thinner gauge tires, there is less grip there to be forced into the gaps, hence extra downforce becomes even more important. When working as it should, the has has typically been strong in fast flowing corners, but less so in slower sections. It may be that it loses too much temperature in those slow sections with insufficient downforce to really work the core, especially when the car is heavily fueled and overcoming the tread's ability to hang onto that track surface. It may be that the suspension geometry is not applying the aerodynamic loads in the way the tire needs, but where the big teams have specific tire departments of 20 people or more, the tiny has team, the smallest of all the teams, only recently expanded this department from one man. The problem is an unfortunate combination of a very tricky tire exposing a weakness of the team's unique structure. However, Steiner reckons that their poor results have also come from having an underdeveloped car compared to their competitors as their first spec model performs at the same level as their current one. Now, back to the famous Rich Energy. Dice about Rich Energy's credentials, lingered and cracks in the partnership ahead of the British Grand Prix started to appear when Rich Energy's Twitter account claimed to have ended their agreement with Haas. Rich Energy suggested that was due to a poor result at the Austrian Grand Prix. Haas refuted the claim, sparking a bizarre internal struggle at Rich Energy between the company's CEO Story and the company's main investors. That led to Story being removed from its position and Rich Energy was renamed Lightning Bolt. Although Rich Energy remained, the branding on Haas's car at races in Hungary, Germany, Belgium, and finally at Sunday's Italian Grand Prix. The team dropped to 9th in the standings, its worst result since its debut campaign in 2016 with just 28 points. Steiner reckons that coming from such a strong season in 2018 contributed to making Haas oblivious to its issues. By the time the season had ended, the damage had already been done and with a terrible title sponsor and a car that was fundamentally flawed, Haas just sucked up the pain in 2019 and with almost no changes to the 2020 regulations, there is hope that the team's 2020 challenger will have learned from its mistakes and have made some serious changes to the car. But with the preseason testing done, it seems that Haas will go through yet another tough year, but let's hope they were sandbagging and that they can have a better season so we can have better content for Netflix's Drive to Survive. And that's been today's video guys, if you enjoyed this video and want some more content like this, then please make sure to hit that like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any future videos. Apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you had an awesome day, and until next time, goodbye.